Hey YouTube, my name is Alan Sanford. I go by Crash RC in the FPV community, and today we're going to build this quad on a budget. Okay, in today's video, we're going to continue with our build and we're going to get our flight controller put in. We're going to get our signal wires from our ESCs connected to the flight controller. We're also going to get our receiver. We're also going to get our buzzer and our VTX put on here. Now, this is our flight controller. It's uh, going to come up here on the screen here in just a minute. But I chose this one and I had to go with the deluxe version. They had Acro and the deluxe. The Acro version doesn't have the MPU. 6000 controller on it so there it is it's the j h e m c u it's a dual uh gyro f7 flight controller it's an all-in-one has an osd also has a bec it's got a five volt and an eight volt output and you have to configure the eight volt output output you have to go in in and there's a mode and you have to kind of configure some things it also has dual camera output so you can put a front camera and a rear camera with this controller on uh, and that's configurable in the modes on the on the beta flight. Um, but again, like I said, I chose this one. It goes from 2S to 6S, and I'm going to put 5S on this build. And I went with the deluxe version, which costs a little bit more, but the deluxe version has the, the trusted MPU 6000 uh, gyro in it. Um, the other one just has the ICM 2689 gyro. Uh, but anyways, the deluxe version also comes with a barometer. And right here, I'm cleaning my solder tip up. Uh, I had to file it down, and I had to retin it. And I'm going to retin it right here on the video real quick. But uh, a little bit more about this controller. It has a barometer on it. It has a black box, 16 megabyte. But that's only on the deluxe version, so you've got to have the deluxe version. It has a 5-volt, 2-amp, and an 8-volt, 3-amp. Um, and <clears throat> in the notes, it says that for the 8-volt, you open and close it by a mode called user 2 now here's the vtx okay so uh the vtx is an akk infinity dvr vtx it goes up to one watt and i really like it um it's got smart audio on it and we're going to hook that up but it has 25 a 200 a 600 and 1000 milliamp power which is switchable uh, it's got two little buttons it has it takes uh Anywhere from 7 to 26 volt input, which marries good with our flight controller. Because our flight controller puts out um, an 8 volt output. And that 8 volt output is what we're going to use to power the VTX here. And then the VTX also has a 5 volt output, which is, is good enough. It runs my um, run cam. I've got some issues in my run cam hybrid. Like when I'm running low milliwatts. Like when I'm on 25 milliwatts or 200 milliwatts or whatever, uh, I get some noise in the video feed, in the FPV feed. Now, the HD feed, that's not a problem. Uh, but when I switch up to the 1,000 milliwatt power with this thing, the feed cleans up. Like it doesn't immediately clean up, but like as, I, as you begin to fly, the, the FPV footage actually kind of cleans up. It doesn't completely go away. Um, so I may have to wind up going back and putting... Uh, a low low ESCR capacitor. It's uh, but I think it's low power actually. I think I may have to power that camera off the same uh, power that I'm powering the VTX. In other words, instead of powering the camera off the VTX, I may have to give it that same eight volt that I'm giving the VTX because it looks like low power uh, lines in the video feed, not noise or anything like. Like the noise is from low power is what it looks like, anyways. Um, so it's a 37 channel. Uh, all of them are above 5650, and all of them are below the 5927, uh, which are legal to use. And you got to have an amateur radio license, as all of them should be. Uh, so it says the equipment is being sold under the FCC amateur radio rules. So there you go. Um, but anyways, I'm I'm soldering the I soldered the VTX here, and I kind of cut it out because when I was soldering, I just sort of hid where I was soldering up. But right here, what I'm doing is I'm I'm twisting these wires up. Number one, that gets the ground kind of twisted around 
the the video wire and the smart audio wire and it kind of kind of acts as a little bit of a shield of radio noise i mean it's not great because i mean you're going to have radio noise and you just kind of have to minimize where you put your wires and kind of but twisting this ground wire up around the um bundle of wires here kind of gives it a little bit of shielding because that ground wire is going to kind of shield it's not it's not the best it's not absolutely perfect but it's better than nothing uh so i suggest a lot if you you know if you can uh twist now i'm not a i'm not a real big twister sometimes i lay my cables flat and and bend them around and you'll probably see me do that in a little bit i like to twist them and then kind of try to bend them i don't like to try to twist them up in a knot i just like them to kind of be wrapped around each other so i'll put this flight controller up here and i'm going to realize i'm going to try to put the vtx up here and i'm like wait wait a minute you know and then i'm going to actually in this build put the receiver under the vtx but that's going to change and i put a picture up here in a minute I, when we get to that i'll show it to you that i actually i had to make room for the run cam hybrids it has a little board it's a little 20 by 20 and i had to make a little 30 30 by 30 to a 20 by 20 reducer to be able to get that run cam hybrid board up in the stack but i had to take the receiver out to do it so right here you see me i'm getting the signal wires i just realized hey i didn't connect the civil signal wires from the ESCs to the flight controller and that's a big must now you're going to notice i'm going to clip these off kind of long and the number one reason i do that i know it adds weight you know you try to reduce weight as much as you can but these are those plastic wires they're not good silicone wires the the rest of the wires on the SCs are good silicone wires, but these signal wires are those plastic wires. Like, I don't know what they're, they, the, the coating on it just sort of tries to melt off the wire. And so I'm cutting them long so that I've got extra wire. And um, so that's what's going on there. So I, I spare you the trouble of me cutting and stripping and pulling and all that. And we're just going to get right straight to soldering. But we're going to solder those two little wires on there. And you notice I'm having trouble soldering them because, again, it's that plastic-coated wire. They don't like to to solder very easily. The, they just, I don't know how to explain it to you until you've, unless you've ever tried to solder those type wires. You, you just don't understand the problems that come with it. The coating wants to melt. The the wire doesn't want to take the heat. The, I, I don't know. It's just, it's, they're the most difficult wires. They're not easy Silicone wires, easy. These little plastic wires, sometimes you have difficulties with them. Sometimes they solder right on. Uh, but you'll see I'm, I'm fiddling with it. I'm having trouble. Now you keep hearing my charger in the background going off. It, it's trying to level out a battery, and so it beeps while it's trying to level out the cells like that. Um, So yeah, I didn't edit this. I just left it in there to show you how fidgety. Like if you can replace your plastic wires with silicone wires, I suggest you do. But anyway, so I got that in there. And here I've got the receiver. And this is the Fly Sky X6B. At the time, I had a Fly Sky radio. Actually, I had a Turnigy radio that I had a Turnigy radio that I bought with a package. It was my first quad, and it was a line of sight quad. But it was the LED 260 Hobby King spider frame or something like that it was, it was the led 250 or 260 frame had the upswept arms i lost that quad that's what got me into this hobby I, and i lost it because i bought an fpv camera for it after i had it for about two years which was like last the year before last so it was two years ago that i had had it for two years been flying nothing but line of sight with it doing no fpv i put a camera on it and it did a flyaway on me. I don't. Well, actually, what happened was uh, I lost track of where I was in the FPV. It's the first time I ever flew the FPV, and I was flying off of a monitor instead of off of goggles. And I tried to take a peek up at it, which you should never do. You should never try to take a peek up at your quad. You should you should wear goggles instead of. Or if you're going to fly off a monitor, stay in the monitor. I looked up, and it started giving me a battery warning. And when I looked back in the FPV feed, there was a tree. And I hit the tree, 
and when I hit the tree, it went off in the woods across from my house, and I've never seen it since. I, I've tra- I've tromped all through those woods. I've gone. There's a big pasture on the other side of that line of woods. I've been up and down that pasture. I've looked all up and down. I mean, I've looked everywhere, and I have yet to find that quad. And I've looked more than once, but my kids went out and tried to help me look for it. And that quad is just it's it's over there somewhere, somewhere in the woods, maybe in a deer field. I don't know, but uh, it's missing. But anyway, so back to, to my story was I was flying nothing but fly sky. That's what I had the radio. I now have a jumper T-16 Pro 2, and I think it's already been discontinued, and I think they now have the T-18 out. But, hey, I've got the T-16, the version 2 with the with the hall gimbals um, and with a carbon faceplate. And I love it. It works for me. I, you know, discontinued or not, moving on to the T-18 or not, I, I don't know. Right here, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm trying to figure out how to solder things on. I've lost track of time. I don't know what's going on. But I'm getting these wires. Um, I don't know why I'm taking a break. I don't know why it's taking me so long. But uh, we'll leave it in there. I'm not going to cut it out. I've already started doing the voiceover on the video. And so, anyways, I did a jump right here to uh, finish soldering up these wires for the for the receiver. Just sort of tugging on those wires, trying to get them put on there and tucked up. Speaking of the receiver, I told you I had a picture. I got a picture coming up here in a minute. I'm going to solder this buzzer on. I may be soldering the buzzer on right here. I may just jump to solder on the buzzer lead on. But I'm going to put a buzzer on. Well, if I was putting the buzzer on, I'd have showed you a picture. So that that was the uh, battery lead, I guess. The battery lead's on the bottom, and this is the um, iBus signal wire, which is soldered to the flight controller. And so there's the receiver soldered in. And now... I don't know what happened. My my video went or something. Anyway, so here's the buzzer. So JHE42B. It's a 110 dBi. It's a buzzer finder. It has its own battery. Now you'll see the battery down there in the bottom left of your screen, maybe hidden. I don't know behind the YouTube controls. I don't know, but it's right down there by the scissors. That's the battery for it. I took the battery off because. I'm running out of room on this quad, and I don't really realize it until later when I try to put that run cam hybrid on there, and then I really realize I'm running out of room. But this is the buzzer I chose. Um, it It's really loud. It's a loud buzzer. Um, and I'm using Uma Grip on this thing, and I'm, the battery strap I have has Uma Grip. And so I don't get too many battery ejections. And if you got a spotter, I shouldn't have too much of a problem. And I'm not flying long range either, so... Um, you know, I, I didn't feel like I needed to keep the backup battery, but I can always add it back on there. It's just a matter of soldering because I just desolder the battery. I cut the battery leads off of that battery and used the wires elsewhere. That's just because that battery's puffed up. And that was the number one reason why I cut that battery off there is because that battery was puffed up. Um, anyway, so I'm trying to figure out where to put these wires on the buzzer, which one's positive, which one's negative. Uh, once I figure that out, I kind of clean my tip up a little bit. I've already pre-soldered the, t- the tab, so it should just be a bloop, 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 and done. <clears throat> now, right here, I had a little stray wire that was off to the side, and I'm trying to fix it and um, trying to keep them from touching, and so... Uh, I fix that and then I'm going to solder this back down. Yeah, trying to solder without tweezers is not, I don't recommend it. Like, I really don't. I think you should always use tweezers. Um, bend your wires, take your tweezers, put your wire down, put some heat to it. It's, it's really the only way to solder. Um, and I've covered that in another video. Um, this build about using tweezers and soldering and look i'm not doing a soldering video i'm not the world's best solder i mean if you go back and watch this video and i don't think the video quality is that great but if you did and you could really zoom in on my solder and you'd see my joints are not perfect 
I don't necessarily leave cold joints, but sometimes they're not the prettiest looking. Sometimes they kind of get a little mushy, get a little mushed around, um, leave the heat on there too a little too long or whatever. I look, I'm not perfect, and but I don't have problems. My quads don't fall out of the sky from bad connections either. So they're sufficient, but they probably wouldn't meet the standard. You know, this is how it should be done standard. So I'm kind of fidgeting here again, and I'm just going to leave that in the video. But I'm not going to fidget long. I'm just trying to get these wires to solder, and I'm having problems, and I don't really know why, but I get them soldered on. You'll notice I got a big pile of wires down there in the right-hand corner. That's all the wires from all the components that I bought. And all of that could add up to be extra weight. So just showing you what happens if you don't trim your wires, that's all the extra. And you take all that stuff and pile it up, that's a good bit of weight. I mean, it really is. It's a, it's a lot of weight. I think Joshua Bardwell covered in one of his videos about how much weight it really is if you don't trim the extra wires. Like, you really should trim this stuff to fit. Now, I know some of you are thinking, oh, well, I may want to move this to another quad. Well, I'm just telling you, it's best to just build it for this quad and leave it. Like, you're not doing yourself any favors by leaving any extra wires to try to be able to put it on something else. So here we go. We're going to try to put this together. And I'm going to try to put this. You're going to notice in the video I tried to put the, the receiver on the stack. But this is where I wound up putting the receiver. It's right behind the stack. This is the back of the quad. You can see the XT60 going out the back. Um, but that's where I wound up putting the receiver. Now we're buttoning everything up here. and um, But I did that so that I can make room for the HD hybrid camera board that's got to go in there. So now we're going to button this all up. I'm finishing putting the screws on here. But like I said, off camera, I wound up putting the, the receiver back there on the back of the quad like I showed you in that picture. But we're going to do a little test and tune. This is going to be the first flight video where I actually tune the quad a little bit before I fly. Uh, this video coming up in just a few minutes, just a second or two after this video right here, shows me kind of button this up a little bit. Um, it's going to be, I'm going to have everything on it. I'm going to be flying with the run cam. It's a test and tune. During the video, you're going to see me land and sort of bump the peas up just a little bit. We're doing 2.7K at 60 frames per second. I'm running the T motor 3143 props. And I had to <laughs> I had to actually file one of the front standoffs down a little bit to make room for this prop. Uh, they were all clearing except for the the right front, the number two motor. The number two motor on this build, the, the prop was actually kind of knocking on the standoff but anyways enjoy the flight footage a little test and tune enjoy it and uh we'll see you in the next build video